a blessed Easter to you, or as I prefer to call it, Resurrection Day, Resurrection Sunday. I have some trivia to start this video today, and if you don't know the answer to this question, I'm sorry you can't phone a friend or even an enemy. What do these people have in common? Muhammad, Joseph Smith, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Buddha. I'll give you three seconds to think about it. Three, two, one, zero. The answer is, they are all dead. If you went to their tomb or digged up their graves, you would find their bodies, or probably chances today you would find bo their bones. However, if you went to the tomb where Jesus was put in, you would not find his body or his bones. Because Jesus is alive, that song goes, the stone's been rolled away, he's alive again. That is what makes the Christian faith differ from all other belief systems, faiths, quote, religions. Our God is alive. In fact, that is the key to our faith, the Bible teaches. Now I'm going to read a couple verses from Scripture, and you can check them out for yourselves in your own Bibles. And they come from 1 Corinthians 15, and I'm going to read verse 14 and 17. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is vain. And verse 17. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Christ has been raised. I know that because he changed my life. He's given me a love. A love for the kids that I work with that times can drive me crazy. A love for them. A love for the boys in my Sunday school class. A love for the liberals, for the conservatives, for Democrats, for Republicans. A love for those who agree with me most of the time. A love for those who disagree with me most of the time. Alright? Now, I will read a story that illustrates that the Jesus rose and how he changes people. Jeremy was born with a twisted body and a slow mind. At the age of 12, he was still in second grade, seemingly unable to learn. His teacher, Doris Miller, often became exasperated with him. He would squirm in his seat and make grunting noises. At other times, he spoke clearly and distinctly, as if a spot of light had penetrated the darkness of his brain. Most of the time, however, Jeremy just irated his teacher. One day she called his parents and asked them to come in. Doris said to them, Jeremy really belongs in a special school. It is fair to him to be with younger children who don't have learning problems. Why, there is a five-year gap between his age and that of the other students. Jeremy's mom cried into a tissue while her husband spoke. Miss Miller, he said, there is no school of that kind nearby. It would be a terrible shock for Jeremy if he had to, if we had to take him out of this school. We know he really likes it here. Dora sat for a long time after they had left, staring at the snow outside the window. Its coldness seemed to seep into her soul. She wanted to sympathize. After all, their only child had a terminal illness. But it was a fair to keep him in her class. She had 18 other youngsters to teach, and Jeremy was a distraction. Furthermore, he would never learn to read and write. Why waste any more time trying? As she pondered the situation, guilt washed over her. Here I am complaining when my problems are nothing compared to that poor family. She thought, Lord, please help me to be more patient with Jeremy. One day, Jerem Jeremy limped to her desk, dra dragging his bad leg behind him. I love you, Miss Miller, he exclaimed, loud enough for the whole class to hear. The other students snickered, and Doris' face burned red. She stammered, why, why, that's nice, very nice, Jeremy. Now please take your seat. Spring came, and the children talked excitedly about the coming of Easter. Doris told them the story of Jesus, and then to emphasize the idea of new life, springing forth, she gave each of the children a large plastic aid. 
Now she said to them, I want you to take this home and bring it back tomorrow with something inside that shows new life. Do you understand? Yes, Miss Miller, the children responded, all except Jeremy. He listened intently. His eye never left her face. He did not even make his usual noises. Had he understood what she had said about Jesus' death and resurrection? Did he understand the assignment? Perhaps she should call his parents and explain the project to them. The next day she went through the aches. In the first ache, Doris found a flower. Oh yes, a flower is certainly a sign of new life, she said. When plants peek through the ground, we know the spring is here. A small girl in the front row raved her hand. That's my egg, Miss Miller, she called out. The next egg contained a plastic butterfly, which looked very real. Doris held it up. We all know the caterpillars change and grow into a beautiful butterfly. Yes, that's new life, too. Little Judy smiled proudly and said, Miss Miller, that one is mine. Next, Doris found a rock with a moss on it. She exclaimed, explained that moss, too, showed life. Billy spoke up from the back of the classroom. My daddy helped me, he beamed. Then Doris opened the fourth egg. She grasped. That egg was empty. Surely it must be Jeremy's, she thought. And of course he did understand the instructions. If only she had not forgotten to phone his parents. Because she did not want to embarrass him, she quietly set the egg aside and reached for another. Suddenly Jeremy spoke up. Miss Miller, aren't you going to talk about my egg? Flustered, Doris replied. But Jeremy, your egg is empty. He looked into her, her eyes and said softly, Yes, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. Time stopped. When she could speak again, Doris asked him, Do you know why the tomb was empty? Oh yes, Jeremy said. Jesus was killed and put in there. Then his father raised him up. The recess bell rang. While the children excitedly ran out to the schoolyard, Doris cried. The cold inside her melted completely away. Three months later, Jeremy died. Those who paid their respects at the mortuary were surprised to see 19 eggs on top of his casket, all of them empty. This story symbolizes what the Bible teaches. The risen Lord changes people's lives. No one else can do that. Not Joseph Smith, not Mary the mother of Jesus, not Billy Graham or the Pope, as hard as they try, but Jesus, the risen Lord. And he will change you, he's changed me, if we will put our faith in him and in his finished work of his death, burial, and resurrection. Have a blessed resurrection day. Until next time, I'm Billy. See you.